session. The first talk is about highway driving. In your case, as a student driver, you have not yet really experienced driving along the highway. Because when you took your actual driving lesson, you were only limited inside the city, which is stop go, stop go driving. In your own observations, which is more dangerous, highway driving or city driving? Highway. Inside the city, there is always traffic congestion. Whereas along the highway, there is no traffic, which is more dangerous now. Of course, you are correct. Highway driving is more dangerous than city driving. Why? Inside the city, since there is always traffic congestion, you cannot really increase your speed. Everybody is running slowly. So in case of traffic accident, it's just a minor traffic accident. Whereas along the highway, whether you run slowly or not, all the other vehicles are moving fast. So in case of traffic accident, it's always fatal traffic accident. That is why highway driving is more dangerous than city driving. Next question. As far as highway driving is concerned, which is more dangerous again? Drag, driving a straight road or driving a curb road? Do you think driving a curb road is more dangerous, isn't it? But in actual practice, it is the opposite. It is more dangerous to drive in a straight road than in a curb road. Why? Let's say you are running 100 kilometers per hour, and then suddenly you are approaching a sharp curve. What do you do? You have to slow down. You have to reduce your speed. You cannot negotiate the curve running 100. So while negotiating the curve, maybe you are now running 20, 30 kilometers per hour. So in case something happens to you, since you are just running slowly, it's much easier on your part to control and stop the vehicle. Whereas if the road is straight, what would be the tendency for the driver? Ah, you will be encouraged to increase your speed. Everything is clear. The tendency now, you race your car running 100, 140 kilometers per hour. And then suddenly, the child might cross the road. You cannot easily control the vehicle. So there will be a big accident. Now this is not only true along the highway. Even inside the city, observe. The moment the road is straight, fully asphalted, cemented, be careful. That is where you will be involved in major accident. But these are just some of the many problems that you will experience whenever you drive along the highway. Our lesson for tonight is teaching you how the step-by-step -step ways by which you can be able to drive along the highway safely. Let's say after finishing your driving lessons with the soldier rights, maybe you took 5 days, 7 days, 10 days, or a maximum of 15 days, 1 hour driving lessons a day. Do not expect too much that you will be a good driver with a limited time. 5 days, 7 days, 10 days, 1 hour, it's not really enough. It is just good for the basic fundamentals. Based on U.S. standard, in the United States, according to their study, before you can pass the examination for a driver's license, you need at least 25 hours continuous driving instruction. That is their minimum standard, 25 hours continuous driving instruction. Considering in that country, driving lessons is part of their high school curriculum. If you just finish five days, one hour, you need to practice several hours more before you can drive your car safely. We just provided you the basic. It's up to you uh, uh, to master that uh, skill by practicing. After practicing for several weeks in Metro Manila, and you feel so confident that you are now a good driver, here comes our uh, vacation, maybe Saturday, Sunday vacation, you are planning to go to Baguio. Uh, of course you have been to Baguio several times, but only as a passenger. Now for the first time in your life, as a newly learned driver, driving your own car alone going to Baguio. And this is really exciting, and this is really highway driving. 
if this is your first time to do it, it is not that easy. Especially if you are not driving a late model or a brand new car. So if you are just driving a second-hand vehicle, one week before leaving Manila, it's always advisable to bring your car to your mechanic. Ask him to check everything, especially the clutch lining. Why clutch lining? Because in Manila, since the roads are flat, even if the clutch lining is a little bit burned, hindi masyadong punado yan. However, along the zigzag road, along the steep hill of Baguio, if the glass line is defective, you might not be able to climb the steep hill of Baguio. Instead of going up, you might go down, falling into a deep ravine. Of course, you have to check uh, the braking system, uh, much more tune up the engine, and also check the tires. And according to your mechanic, he checked everything, and he assured you, you will reach Baguio without any problem. So you are now ready to go. Well, in long distance driving, it is not just the car that you prepare. Uh, planning is very important here. And the next thing you have to check is your expenses. Yeah. How much do you think you will spend for your gasoline consumption just to reach Baguio. So the first thing that you must know as a car owner and driver at the same time is the gasoline consumption of your car. Unless you know that, you can never budget your daily, weekly, and monthly expenses. How do you know whether your car is giving you a 10 kilometers per liter, 12 kilometers per liter, or 14 kilometers it's so easy to do that. As a car owner, this is the first thing that you must do to do the gasoline consumption of your car. How? This is the correct way. Uh, the proper method to check your gasoline consumption. And you have to remember this because it's very important. One early morning, before going to your office, you go to a gasoline station near your place and then buy gasoline full tank. Let's say the full capacity of your gasoline tank is 45 liters. Mag full tank ka, 45 liters. Punong puno, 45 liters. After paying the full amount, before you leave the gasoline station, you look inside your speedometer. Let's say this is the speedometer. At the middle portion of your speedometer, you can see a lot of numbers. We call that mileage or odometer. You check the reading. It is 50,000 kilometers. That is the reading of your speedometer. 50,000 kilometers. You write it down. 50,000 kilometers. And then drive the car the whole day. In the afternoon, coming from your office, before going home, you pass to the same gasoline station again, the second time. But you buy gasoline. Full tank only, full tank. In the morning, at full tank of 45 liters. After using it the whole day, but full tank only. After 5 liters, not full tank now. What is the meaning of that? You consume 5 liters the whole day. Check the second reading. What is the reading? It is now 50,050. In the morning, the reading is 50,000. In the afternoon, the reading is 50,050. That means you drove 50 kilometers the whole day. Out of these 50 kilometers, you consume 5 liters. So your car is giving you how many kilometers per liter? You divide the number of kilometers run, divide the number of consumed liters, so, your car is giving you 10 kilometers per liter. So, that is your gasoline consumption. 10 kilometers per liter. Meaning, for every 10 kilometers that you drive your car, you are consuming 1 liter. If the price of 1 liter is 30 pesos, so every 10 kilometers that you drive your car, you are paying 30 pesos for driving your vehicle. 
since you consume 5 liters times 30 pesos per liter, so you spend 100 pesos the whole day for driving your vehicle. You have to do this every six months as a car owner because this is the only way you can determine whether your car is consuming more gasoline than the normal way. So, I'll give you a record. August 11, the gasoline consumption of my car is 10 kilometers per liter. Okay? After six months or after three months, you repeat the same procedure. Magpul tanka, 45 liters. You drive 50 kilometers. Magpul tanka uli, 10 liters. Na. Six months earlier, the same number of kilometers, you only consume 5 liters. How come six months after, you are now consuming 10 liters? So your car is giving you only 5 kilometers per liter. Lumakas siya sa gasolina. Something is wrong with your engine. Yeah. So it's a wake-up call for you. Better bring the car to your mechanic. Heavy check. Maybe you need to have a regular general tune-up, meaning replace contact point, condenser, spark plug. You might even clean the carburetor. Maybe you spend around 1,000 pesos for this. After tuning up the machine, uh, you repeat the same procedure. The moment it goes back to 10 kilometers per liter, only then you can relax. Your car is now in tip-top condition. You know, nowadays, with the prohibitive prices of gasoline, this is a very important method to check that. Uh, and most car owners, araw-araw, bili ka ng biling gasolina, full tank ka ng full tank. Uh, are you not wasting your money? Are you not wasting the gasoline, the energy? Yes, maybe you have the money to buy, but that is not the point. Uh, you have to maximize uh, the amount that you are paying uh, for using your vehicle. It is not only to save gasoline, it is not only for economic purposes, but much more for your personal uh, uh, consumption. Like for instance, you know, whenever you be, if, if, if you are a car owner and you are a member of the institution, Rotary, Rotary Club, uh, Lions Club, when you are just waiting for uh, uh, time uh, uh, for the meeting, that you go into a guy, or that you take a little drive, what are you doing with your car? Oh, you think you're going to get a car? How many times do you have to get a car? What are you going to get a car? What are you going to get a car? What are you going to get a car? Imagine. Five years mo nang hawak ang kotse mo. You don't even know the gasoline consumption of your car. You cannot, hindi ka mapwedeng magyaba. Alam mo, pare, kahit ang malaking kotse mo yan, ha? Ha? this car is giving me 14 kilometers per liter, 12 kilometers per liter. So, that is the way to check your gasoline consumption. So your car is giving you 10 kilometers per liter. You are planning to go to Baguio. Let's say Manila Baguio is 300 kilometers. Your car is giving you 10 kilometers per liter. You will be traveling 300 kilometers. How many liters needed to reach Baguio? You divide. 300 kilometers divided by 10 kilometers per liter, you need 30 liters, one way. Another 30 liters back to Manila. Another 20 liters touring the city, siyempre, mga mga masyarakat, Bukayuta, you go to Mayskyo, like this, like this. So, approximately, you need 80 liters. How much is the price of gasoline? A time is 30 pesos na lang, kamo. Time is 30 pesos. Magkano? 2,400 pesos just for your gasoline consumption alone if you travel 300 kilometers. So with that, are you willing to, to, to spend 2,400 pesos just to reach Baguio? So before you decide to drive your own car, you get the telephone directory or the Victory Liner bus or Sunshine Tours 
or feel tranquil, or that one. Be quiet. How much is the air bus, air conditioned bus, one way going to Baguio? But what are you doing? 300 na, one way. Another 300 back to Manila. So if you leave your car at home, you take the air conditioned bus with television in front, reclining seat, curtain all around, you only spend 600 pesos. And you will not be the one driving that bus for six, seven, eight hours drive. You are being driven by an experienced, skilled driver. If you don't want to see the view, you just close the curtain, you recline the seat, you stay. You are like inside an airplane. Or if you are uh, uh, excited, you open the curtain, you can see the mountain. <laughs> by the time you reach Baguio, you, you are still fresh and relaxed, as if you did not even leave Manila at all. Whereas if you drive your own car, 2,400 pesos just for your gasoline consumption alone, hindi ka pakasamang toge niya. Yeah. So, uh, you will be the one, uh, you will be the one driving that car for six, seven, eight hours, depending upon the traffic situation, non-stop driving until you reach Baguio, hoping you reach Baguio alive. <laughs> By the time you reach Baguio, you are already tired and exhausted. You would not enjoy the trip anymore. So, with this thinking, remember, in long distance driving, based on experience. It is always cheaper and safer for you to leave your car at home and take the air-conditioned bus. Because what is exciting only in long-distance driving is the first one hour. Siyempre, pumunta ka ng bagyo eh. Bagong ligo ka, alas 4, nagalpusal ka, tapos magpapagyo ako. Siyempre, excited ka. One hour, okay ba eh? Second hour, sumasakit na yun. Third hour, talagang masakit na. Yan. Fourth hour, lumilit na yung mata mo. It's normal in long distance driving. Why? Because the number one problem in highway driving is, we call it highway hypnosis. The highway will surely hypnotize you. Your eyes are open for six hours. On the fifth hour, babagsak ka sumurado. Maya-maya, inaantok ka na. Maya-maya, lalo na kung pag-uutap ka na lalo na. Last of the hour, under the heat of the sun. Kaya maya-maya, na-disgrasya ka na. Kaya maraming nababang na sa highway because of the... But suppose money is... Dito ang tiba. Suppose money is not your problem. Your intention in going to Baguio is not to save gasoline. It is not to save money. You have only one intention in going there. What is that? To try your ski as a newly learned driver. Tinuruan lang ako five minutes hanging sa socialize. Ngayon mag-hanging ako doon, mag-abort. Hindi kaya ako mahuhulog sa bangin. It's always a challenge for every newly learned driver to be driving along the zigzag road. As if, unless you drive along the zigzag road, as if your driving is not yet complete. Uh, the same thing is true if you grew up in the province where you learn how to drive in your own town, Baguio, Atrasabante, Atrasabante, Atutuka. Uh, 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 and you are always looking forward by the time you can drive in Manila. As if Manila is the testing ground and that is really true. The moment you learn how to drive in Manila, it's a good sign that you are really a good driver. <laughs> Kaya nga pag ang disensya mo galing sa Manila, may konti kang kaibangan. <laughs> and that's really true. You cannot deny that. Uh, uh, lahat ng klaseng problema ng driving, makikita mo rito. Kaya nga, uh, there's an old saying, if you can drive in Manila, you can drive anywhere all over the world. And that is true. And you can see that anywhere you go, not only all over the Philippines, even in other countries, you stand in one corner and observe those vehicles driving in front of you. By watching the way he drives vehicle, you can easily determine whether the passing car is being driven by a Manila driver or a provincial driver. How do you know that? Okay, you go to Cagayan, you go to Cebu, you go to Baguio. 
uh, any time of the year, you, you stand along the session road and observe those vehicles driving in front. Uh, you can check whether the passing vehicle is a public driver or a Manila driver. How? Generally speaking, provincial drivers are more courteous. They follow traffic rules and regulations. Uh, if the traffic light is stopped, they will surely stop. If there are pedestrians crossing the road, they will stop, give way to pedestrians. If they are eating something, banana or money inside, they will keep their basura inside. Uh, if they are smoking, they don't throw away the cigarette box outside the window. Kaya mas marini sa provincia. And here comes a Manila driver. Ibang kumito siya eh. Lumilipad siya. Lumilipad. The traffic light is stopped. He will not look at the traffic light. May police pa. Pag walang police, si Gogo niya. Ay, Diyos ko. Siguradong tiga Manila yun. Pinakalibay natin. Ang mga tiga Manila, galit na galit sa pedestrian. Sa provinsya, lahat ng pedestrian, they will give way. Ang tiga Manila driver, pag maganda ka, pag pinigyan ka. Sige, miss, sige. Sige. Magpangit ka, pangit mo, tumatawin mo. Sige. Kaya nito, parang tayo nagpapasinsyon sa kalsada. Pag tumatawin ka, we don't respect pedestrians in Metro Manila. Everybody's passing. You are always in a way. So you are in a determined. You are decided to try this highway driving going to Baguio. There are two ways to reach Baguio by land. One, you can use the old highway, which is the Makartur Highway, which is a two-lane road, Salu Kunganyan. In 1960s, 1970s, this is the only route going to Baguio. There is no alternate route. At the time going to Baguio during Bali week time, it will take you 12 hours, 15 hours. You have to pass all these small barriers of Bulacan, Pampanga, Pampasinan, and Tarlac. Kaya nga nauso yung mga puto kuchintar yan sa kaya mga yung sa may kawayan because of that. But when they open the new highway, it's so easy to go to Baguio. The North Expressway. If you are familiar with the North Diversion Road, there is a big island at the middle, separating both ways. Number one, number two, service road going to Manila, going to the north. Number one, number two, service road going to Manila. If you are planning to go there at night, and you are not using a late model vehicle, you better use the Makartu Highway. Because in case you experience engine trouble along the Makartu Highway, you can easily ask for help along this place sa this place. Dito, pag nasiraan ka sa gabi rito, maraming multo rito. At mumultuhin ka talaga, mumultuhin ka talaga. Ang unang magmumulto ay mga towing service. Offering their exorbitant fee to tow your car out. Mechanics, offering services, pero tatagayin ka sa presyo. But the problem with the Makartur Highway is a two-way road. Salong po man yan. All vehicles are allowed to enter this place. Galesa, Pagbubote, Pagbabaka, lahat-lahat. Yan. So for every one block, there's an intersection. For every intersection, there's a traffic light. For every traffic light, there's a policeman. So it is stop, go, stop, go driving until you reach the area. By the time you reach the area, it's already four hours. It's really a bother. But here, in 45 minutes, you are in law from Malintawa. Why? Because along this highway, there are no intersections, no traffic lights, no pedestrians, no policemen. Not all vehicles can enter. It's a free flow highway all the way until you reach the area. But you have to pay the price for using this highway. And they increase the toll fee, which is 203 pesos just to exit. Another 203 pesos to go back. So 406 pesos before 406, that's more than enough uh, for your gasoline consumption. 
ngayon, tulgin pa lang yan. Ito, it's free. But four hours ka naman. <coughs> so I would rather pay 203 pesos to save time and gasoline. But in your case, you are just a new learn driver. First time to be driving along the, the super highway. And there are certain rules that you have to follow strictly, which are not sometimes applicable inside the city. So we have to teach you how to use the proper way to use this highway. Uh, especially if you are planning to go off-road, so you have to discipline yourself. We have number one, number two, service road. Under the rules of this highway, always keep to the right. Always stick to this number, number two lane at all times. When do you use the number one lane? Only for passing or overtaking another vehicle. After passing, you have to go back to your lane. And always see to it that this number one lane is always open at all times. That is the rule. But have you seen Filipino drivers following this basic rule? You go to Palamba, you go to Batangas, you drive along the South Super Highway. Ang luwang luwang ng South Super Highway na yan. And yet every day, there is always traffic congestion. Why? Because nobody is following the rule. Observe a typical Filipino driver. Knowing the rule, initially, he will follow, he will keep to the right. Okay? Because he knows that is the rule. But after several kilometers, he realized, masyado magpabagal dito. So, nag-overtake siya. Ah, you can do that. Because this number one day is really there for you to use for overtaking or passing another vehicle. But the problem now is, after swerving to the left, he realized, mas maganda rito ah. <laughs> Walang tao. <laughs> Bakit ang magtatsaga sa kanal? So, hindi na siya ngayon naalis dyan. Here comes another car. Who wants to pass? He cannot. Because you can see two slow-moving vehicles running slowly, running side by side, blocking the flow of traffic. If the driver behind is an educated person, to let you know that you are not supposed to be there, how do you give the signal? Dim, right, dim, right, dim. You have to flash the dimmer light. Dim, right. So if you are the driver there, the paplas ang headlight ang nasa likod yan, he's telling you something. Brad, mabagal ka. Go to the right. Let me pass. Anyway, you can always go back later on. But let me pass. But do you think he will give way? Lupulup ka na paplas ka. Nauna ako sa iwa. Lalo niyang babagalan ngayon to irritate you. So, ito ngayon, magiging brutal na ngayon. Instead of doing it, it's season 12 telling you nicely that you are not supposed to be there by blasting this in light, but right, uh, right like that. Now, bubusina siya. Pop, 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 bubusina siya. You know, the moment you use the word, that is a sign of arrogance. In most developed countries, you seldom use the, hear the sound of the word. If ever you are forced to use it, you just tap it lightly, but only in case of an extreme emergency. But here, no. Huh? We use this horn to scare people. <laughs> huh? uh, and it's only in the Philippines where all kinds of musical horn are available. <laughs> musical. Thank <laughs> you. 
tanong ka lang, yung unang itatanong niya, nasa nung busina. Pag nalaman niya yung busina, oh, 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 oh